she love me when I'm in it, and she never be pretending, nothing is real. She gonna tell you what she bought it, cause she know you can't afford it. Welcome to the eSpot with Camille. I am your host, Camille Cower, and I cannot wait for you to meet my final guest of the Kaleidoscope Project, the one, the only, Santification, Santified, Santi David Santiago. <laughs> I'm like, wait, all the Santis, all the, you know, somebody gets to, Santi. You, went, you just introduced the Holy Trinity, <laughs> the Holy Santi. <laughs> oh, wait, I feel like I should do the, um, have you seen the Gucci commercial with, or the Gucci movie commercial with, uh, with um, Ga Lady Gaga, where she's like, um, father, son, house of Gucci. Yes. <laughs> so when you said that, that's what I visualized <laughs> really I love quickly. It. I love it. So thank you so much for being my guest, but I have to, we have to rewind before we start talking about the Kaleidoscope project. I have to hear, how did you get your start in the world of interior design? Because just looking at your own interior, because I'm just like mesmerized by your place. So tell me, how did all of this bundle, bundle of energy and beauty come out in interior design? You know, I think it happened uh, serendipitously. Uh, you know, the short story is I was working one summer with a, a friend of mine who was a general contractor, handyman, doing home improvement. And he asked me to help him uh, with the painting aspects of the jobs and um, hang wallpaper. So through that hands-on experience, I met a gentleman walking in with a tailored balloon shade. And I had no idea what that was. I said, I just thought it was beautiful and beautifully made. And he said, well, it's a balloon shade. And I just bought a workroom to the trade here in New Jersey. And uh, why don't you come by the shop? I'm really proud and I'd love to introduce you to what I do. So mm -hmm. I did, I took him up on the offer like a sponge that I've always been. And through a conversation, he said, he asked me, you know, David, if you like this, um, I know someone that's looking for, uh, you know, an entry level designer or, you know, design consultant like yourself. I said, I'm not a designer, I'm not a design consultant, but I can sell some, anything. So from that conversation, <laughs> interview, my delivery, as I'm delivering to you, um, I was hired on the spot and it was my first journey into the world of quote unquote decorating um, interior design, but more importantly, what I was brought into the world of window treatments. And through mm. that, I ended up becoming a window treatment specialist shop at home, as we used to say for Calico Corners. And from that journey, the same gentleman that picked up the phone for me the first time around, who ended up being the workroom to the trade for the whole, you know, New York metro area, like Nassau's and Calico Corners, he s said that a design firm in New York on Madison Avenue was looking for a window treatment specialist that I was perfect because I had acquired the knowledge of calculated, cal calculating, knowing how patterns were cut. I spent times in the workrooms about and knowing how to sew and certain things could be done. And I, I quickly became a window treatment specialist uh, for a design firm in New York. And that led me into the world of New York City. 200 Lexington, the D&D &D building, and the rest is history. It just kind of evolved that way. And through my journey and um, every position I've, I've maintained in the, in the world of design, I acquired knowledge, hunger, and appetite, and just grew um, into home furnishings, into buying, into kitchens and bathroom, general construction. And it's just been this process of evolution uh, and I won't date myself, but it's, you know, it's a 20 year plus journey. And in yeah. 2011, I started my own business, Casa Santi. And I never looked back. Mm -hmm. My last position was a color consultant for Benjamin Moore here in Bergen County at, at the flagship store. And um, I just decided it was time to, you know, fly and, and soar and uh, take everything I've learned and put it into a business. Okay. So when you left the Eagle's Nest of Benjamin Moore, so to speak, <laughs> I bet you didn't realize you were going to have that full circle moment where they would be one of the sponsors for the Kaleidoscope project. You know, now, I, I didn't. I had yeah. no idea what I was in store for, honestly. No. But what were you doing before? I mean, someone saw the magic in you that you desired, that you needed to be in the design world. What were you doing before that? Just curious. You know, before that, I honestly, um, I have I had moved out to California. I had done mm. some acting and I thought I wanted to come back to New York to study theater. 
which has become part of my world. Um, and that passion for acting and being on stage evolved to musical theater. And again, the same thing happened. The director said, you know, you've got something, kid. You've got a voice. You should go study music, be the triple threat. And that was my other journey, music. Yeah. So it's kind of been this life of duality, a parallel life. Um, and I've always applied this energy. I've had it since I was young. Um, and there's a, a quote in one of my first design books from uh, one of my customers, Gloria. She's like, uh, take that energy and put it into a career and you will go far. And mm -hmm. the one thing that I've kept is that appetite, that energy. And when I mentor, I tell everyone, stay hungry. And no matter what you do, stay hungry. So you can yeah. grow and you can, I'm always growing. I'm still learning. I still want to learn. Yeah. And I guess that's a huge testament to your career lasting so long and being able to transition through so many different careers is that you were able to adapt and become almost like a chameleon in that sense where you adapted and learned something new. And I mean, because so much has changed in the world, whether technology wise or just the way we communicate, even like right now, in that sense that you really never know where your path can lead and being open to new things has definitely paid well for you. So tell us, how did you get involved with the Kaleidoscope Project? How did that come about? The Kaleidoscope Project came to me early on through my beautiful and dear friend, Amy Lynn, that I met through the industry on a bus ride home from High Point. We had mutual friends and we knew of each other. And that was the seed that was planted and we fell in love with each other then. So um, fast forward to when Amy was thinking about this project and kind of just planting seeds, um, she reached out to me and said, I'm working on this project. And it, the essence of it is BIPOC driven with a mission statement and hopefully a 501c3 and or foundations to provide scholarships. And I said, okay, I'm in. I wasn't sure what I was saying I'm in for, but you know, it was the first time that I was able to look at my Spanish heritage and give it a voice. Not that it never had a voice, not that I ever looked at myself through my olive skin tone, my light skin tone, but I looked at myself differently and I said, my mm -hmm. gosh, if I'm experiencing this for the first time, and maybe that's my own story. I said, this is someone's life from a completely different point of view every single day. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I was just like, I need to be part of this. So um, as a lover of the industry, as an advocate of the industry, most importantly, multicultural diversity, um, like where I grew up in Teaneck, New Jersey, um, I, I definitely want to be a part of this. So I said yes. And um, I, I started looking at the spaces and there were three communal spaces and I think one or two had been spoken for. I said, I'll do the bar. I had no idea what the bar looked like. <laughs> um, but when I did- You are in for it, yeah. I was in for it. And when I saw the bar, I said, what are we gonna do? Yeah. Um, yeah, and th that became there became the journey. The journey started. Yeah. So talk about your your bar, oh. your um, your room. So what was the? Because I, mean, I know that everyone had like a limit, not limited, but they had a palette they had to choose from. So it wasn't as Amy likes to call it the hodgepodge lodge. She it didn't wasn't. want that, or you guys, no one wanted that. But so how did your? Um, how did you come about your inspiration and being able to speak to your Spanish heritage? How did, were you able to enter into, how were you able to, I'm getting a little tongue tied here. How were you able to weave that all in as well? Well, you know, through color, you know, mm. uh, we chose a, the, the red palette, the warm tones, which is very prominent in our, in our culture, Caribbean culture. Um, you know, uh, the, the name of the bar, Acento and Accent, whether it's an accent on in design or an, uh, an actual musical notation. Um, let me tell you what inspired me. It was the Metropolitan Opera, which was the first time that I was actually able to incorporate both of my worlds with no boundaries, limitless, go big or go home. And I thought what better way than to bring music and design and culture together, especially in the Berkshires where you have Tanglewood, you have the arts, and there's nothing like it there. It's, it's certainly not a scarlet red, delicious, silk covered, you know, with paint and everything bar. Um, yeah. So that's where I went with it. 
And through yeah. my love of music, my love of Metropolitan Opera, I quickly, um, one of the things I, I, I did for this particular project is I utilized all of the sponsors and beyond. Uh, first and foremost, they're there for a reason. They want their products exposed, utilized, spoken about. That's why they sponsor. Um, but I was adamant about having like gold leaf and red walls. And so I Googled gold leaf ceiling, literally Googled gold leaf ceiling, red silk walls and the Metropolitan Opera, well, the Metropolitan Opera popped up and so did Scala Mandre. Scala Mandre wasn't part of the sponsorship, any of the sponsors, but I felt compelled to reach out the, to them being that, hello, this is the Met Opera, it's opera inspired. Um, so I called my sales rep and I gave her the pitch. Like I'm talking to you, mm -hmm. I said, A, B, C. And it was very sincere and organic. And she fell in love with the story. She was part of the Bolshoi theater through the ballet department. And when she was a child, we were having an opera fest moment. And then she, she told me, which for some reason, I feel like I'd never knew this. The Metropolitan mm -hmm. Opera provided the fabric. I'm sorry, Scala Mandre provided the fabric for the Metropolitan Opera. I'm like, well, no is not part of this equation. Hello, you need to be yeah. part of this. I want it all. And of course, I went there with this proposal that was like umpteen thousands of dollars that they said, uh, we can't do that, but you can do this and we'll give you yeah. this. And it'd be great if you can utilize product that is identifiable, meaning, you know, mm -hmm. an obvious exclusive Scala Mandre pattern. So I said, well, mm -hmm. who am I going to be? Who am I going to say no to? And they're saying yes to me. So we did. So uh, we used their grass cloth, catwalk grass cloth on the ceiling, and it's a 36 inch wide pattern that comes in striped. I decided to use it as a border. Uh, we used their red silk vinyl covering in, on the interior of the bar. And then the contractors of this bar, Aaron and, and Michael and everybody, not that you know who they are, but the painters, everybody went above and beyond. Since we had limited amount of wall covering, I had it in me that why not strie the walls? Why not mimic the wallpaper? And of course, painters mm -hmm. are, I think, I truly believe that painters are artisans at heart. And when yeah. they have an opportunity to kind of just go beyond the brushstroke and they could finesse and do exactly what I'm doing, he was like, you know what, let's go for it. And it was a lot of work up until like the last minute above and beyond Mwah, to them. Mm -hmm. They were phenomenal. Yeah. And, ex and executing, you know, the vision. Yeah. And I love that this, because you said your other duality of your life was that you also were into music theater. So what a great way to blend both worlds together in your bar of bringing your design world and also your love for music and performing. So was there any music you were listening to while you were coming up with your visions or did you have obviously opera, I guess, was oh, your yeah. main focus as far as what kind of music people would enjoy in your bar as well. So that's a really great question because you would think I would be blasting opera. Um, mm -hmm. And opera is a wonderful thing to listen to, but not during conversation and when you're talking about A or B or you're at a party. Mm -hmm. um, but one of the ways we got to celebrate, again, the opera element of it, of it was through my art director and my partner and his artwork and collection. Um, he has a series called Dolpera, which are inspired by the opera heroines of, you know, some of the popular operas like La Boheme, The Flader Mouse, uh, The Mikado, Manon. And I told him, uh, we need to have your artwork uh, as a mural. We need to have it as your art. So we have Maria Callas there. We have Mimi from La Boheme in, in the powder room. Um, and as far as the entertainment is concerned, the music, I'm a big jazz lover. So I would okay. go in there and I would play a little bit of Johnny Hartman and John Coltrane. It's really smooth I love and Johnny easy Coltrane. to talk to, you know, over. Yeah, yeah. And then on opening night, we blasted salsa, which was all Latin mm -hmm. music. We were dancing. Everybody was in there. We knew it was COVID, I mean, post-COVID, post, post -COVID, but still, we wanted to have a party. And it was fun to have that Spanish music. And even throughout the, the, the show house, we would go up on weekends, every weekend we were there, break out the bottle right. and we would turn music up and we would dance and we would talk. And I really got to experience this above and beyond the full scope, no pun intended of what I thought I was truly gonna, you know, how involved I was going to be. 
but we got up in the car, drove up to Lenox every weekend through until the very end of the show and met wonderful people and got to have conversations like mm -hmm. we're having today about music, opera, culture, black, white, BIPOC. We brought it up. It was apparent. It was needed. And it was comfortable yeah. because often it could be mm -hmm. uncomfortable to mm -hmm. talk about the reality of what's going on. Yeah, no, and you guys had a lot of support too, which is amazing. Because I heard there was like over 35 different press that was there on Media Day for when you guys opened up. And just, I mean, speak to how important it is as a designer to get that kind of exposure and to have that kind of support in the media as well to really showcase your work and how that can change your life even with your career. And some, oh, well, I mean, you're being able to be able to make beautiful places is what will change your life. will get your career going. But at the same time to get that exposure for what you're doing really can make a big difference, especially with it being that so, so frequently it's been an overlooked group. And now that you guys are kind of getting the spotlight well-deserved, what is it like? It's, it's huge. There's so many elements to what you're talking about that speak volume. Um, first, the opportunity for the designers across the country to come together. Mm -hmm. Second was the financial investment aspect of what this project entailed mm -hmm. and what it normally entails when you do this kind of project. And a lot of right. young designers or designers don't have that financial capacity to say yes. Um, so they're not able. The opportunity was golden. What Amy and Patty and Liz set out to do, and it truly... Um, Amy's vision on this um, was little investment or no investment for the designers. And then to add all of that publicity and PR on top of that, I have yet to see any project like this exist in the industry. Value right there, ka-ching, 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 ka-ching. And then add the element of marketing for yourself, branding, and uh, giving Op having opportunities to talk about design, uh, collaboration, again, the BIPOC issue, all of that, it doesn't, it didn't stop there. And it's not going to stop there. And that's the beauty of this project. Again, it was this wonderful seed that's been planted and it's just blooming like a garden. And I think it's, it's going to grow and develop in different directions and give every designer their due diligence and their opportunity and how they choose to take this opportunity and amplify it and turn the page, I think, it, you know, again, it's your destiny. Um, mm -hmm. Go with it. Uh, and, I, and I certainly am um, because it's not the David show, it's the Kaleidoscope show. It's a Kaleidoscope project. I'm meeting you because of this project. I knew of you, okay. but look, look what brought us together. Now you and I were two mm -hmm. peas in a pod. You stuck with me, I'm gonna know you. And that's what this project did. Yeah. You know, yeah. It, it's huge. Yeah. No, I mean, because so like previous seasons of my show, I was working mainly with entertainment and just it's like, you know, they had the Oscars so wide and this different things and where things are starting to change. But it's very slow. And one thing I would say, like, there's still a lot to be done because um, their idea of inclusion would just be like, oh, we're just going to throw more BIPOC people in front of the camera, but they're not still the main storyline. So with the Kaleidoscope project, when I started hearing about this, I'm like, oh, yeah, I'm changing my show direction because this is really doing something. And it's really making a point of putting the focus on the designers, because even when I was interviewing different people or putting together the list, Amy, Patty, Michael were all like, make sure the designers are first. We, the whole thing is about the designers. The house is great, but we want to make sure it was still the focus was to bring attention to the designers. They're the focus, what they can bring to the table to make sure that they're getting the recognition they deserve for their work, their talent. And that's the difference. It's not just, oh, we're going to we're going to put up a black square or we're going to hashtag for a couple of days. We're going to put our money where our mouth is and actually support. We're going to do panels. Or we're going to, you know, like there's so many things that they're doing for the Kaleidoscope project that I just, I was like, I have to get involved. <laughs> like there, there's no other way than, um, cause a, I've been working in the furniture industry. A lot of the work I do was commercial work for furniture ads and for like, so this has been my bread and butter. So just to see that my community on the other side of it, I guess the duality of it all as well, <laughs> and that to see how much support and how much encouragement is going, is just, 
I'm so excited about this project. I'm so excited about all that you guys are doing and with the scholarship portion of it all and having interns involved as well to really play it forward. Just a great opportunity. So um, you have done so much even before the Kaleidoscope project. So I would be dumb not to bring up some of those other things you've done because you've gotten a little bit more exposure from other things as well. So sure. speak, you know, share a little bit of how those opportunities came about as well for those of those designers who are eager to get their chance in front of the camera. You know, I, I always say, you know, walk the talk, you know, mm. be hungry, but don't be starving and apparent. Um, don't be thirsty, thirst yeah, traps. Yeah, don't be so thirsty. Don't come like this. Yeah. Just back it up. Take it, take just digest it, plant your seeds. Um, you know, mm. I've never had the agenda. That I'll, I'll clear, not, I'm not gonna, not that I need to clear the air, but I've never had this agenda that I'm going to be, let's say on television, or I'm going to do this, I'm going to do this. All I know is I, I love what I do, which is design. Design has opened up opportunities as well as being part of organizations, um, mm. be it the Interior Design Society, which I was, the, past president of them involved with the national level as well, and also part of their diversity committee as well. Um, IFDA, I'm the president of the IFDA in New York chapter, um, accessory resource team with it, um, NEWH, and I mean, I can go on. I'm, yeah, I'm hungry. So get involved in your community, yeah. yeah. The International yeah. Society of Furniture Designs, those are five organizations I'm a member of. And then I'm on boards on, um, through the philanthropy side as well. Um, Bailey House Auction Gala, which we got introduced through the design industry, giving back and providing housing for age, HIV, cancer, the Hope, Hope Lodge, providing housing for cancer patients. Uh, kids need more, sending kids with, with cancer to, to camp through table uh, tops events. So all of these events have helped me I'm sorry, all of these organizations and events have helped me kind of just cross over a bridge, open doors, conversations like this. Mm -hmm. um, they've led me also to television, George of the Rescue on NBC, giving back. Um, it was, uh, again, through a trade affiliate um, that recommended me to the producers. They were looking for some new young talent and through just attending trade, uh, trade events at showrooms and making connections, conversations, connections, um, I was recommended. And from that, a wonderful relationship was acquired. I ended up on a, my first national television show and giving back. And now I'm doing another episode coming up this, this, um, this September that we're going to start filming. Um, so giving back to me has been instrumental in giving me exposure through, let's call it the television media. You know, um, social media has helped me. Instagram has been a wonderful, wonderful platform for casting agents to come out to me and and do, you know, um, chemistry tests for certain television shows. And again, I never, you know, I was an actor, sure. But as a designer, I never thought, oh, I want to be on television designing the world. I want to do this. Right, that that right. wasn't yeah. my, my agenda. But it's come my way, so I welcome it because it's another hat, no pun intended, that I'll just wear in, in, in what I do. So with yeah. my journey, it's been that. It's been always the core of what I do was interior design, but always going, saying yes to this and saying yes, yes to this. Never overextending myself and depleting the natural essence of who I am and what I do. Don't get me wrong. I disconnect and I rest because I need it in order to give. Yeah, self-care self is important. Is so yeah. important. And more now than ever, um, mm -hmm. you know, having a singing career and design and navigating that. And that's how I'm able to do that because I work for myself. Um, mm -hmm. And, and uh, again, going back to television, um, I was asked to do some set design consulting and through my love of what I was doing and energy, um, I ended up becoming a design and lifestyle correspondent for Donna Drake here at CBS New York, which streams nationally as well. And that's been still on my resume and it's still the third year going strong. So television is on the horizon. How that develops, I don't know. Um, but, you know, knowing when to say no is just as important as saying yes, because sure. you can't say yeah. yes to it all. 
Um, and that's been a lesson also. I'm 99% yes, sir, <laughs> because I feel like I can do it all. But there are parts of me that, you know, especially now with so much that I'm involved in, I want to be able to give it more than 80%, you know? Mm -hmm. I don't want to say I'll do it and be there, you know, twice a year to have my name on something. That's not that's not who I am. Um, right. I'm 80% right. or more, but really 95 Anyone that knows me, I'm a ship in full sail. Oh, yeah, 110. I show up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I thought, I no, I, I'm I glad you spoke about, about that balance too. No, you did, but it also it, it was great for you to mention the balance because so many people working now from home or just are now learning that that ability to know when to shut things down, when to self reflect, and just really be able to give yourself that time to balance everything out. And like you mentioned, that you can't really give your all if you're depleting all your resources. So it, Again, great gems that were given. Yeah, <laughs> so it, thank you for it, all of that. No, uh, it's one perfect. of the things that I've also said, you know, mm -hmm. you know, I'm not necessarily, I'm not a rich man, but I have a rich life mm -hmm. because of how I walk, how I work, who I work with, um, mm -hmm. who I share my work time with, like yourself. This to me is gold. And, you know, that's rewarding to me. That fills my heart, my soul, my intellect. And I carry that in the work that I do. When I'm working, I'm working. But this is work too in a whole different way. And it may not be quote unquote, you know, financial equity, but our sweat equity is gold, Camille. And this is precious to, to you, to myself, um, not to presume. Um, but yeah, I, that's how I, that, no, that's you're how right. I work. That's how, no, this is great opportunity for me as well, just to be able to help set, give a platform for all of these great stories and to share where other people also need to share their platforms. Because a lot of times when you do these little news flashes, it's just a minute and a half of a story. You don't really get to hear how they got started and maybe the different challenges they went through with creating these rooms and the different challenges. So it's, it's nice to hear that because a lot of times with the different shows, you just see the before and afters, not necessarily all that goes on in between but also get that opportunity to share how you got there because sometimes people like even like myself where you're like oh, I can't start over again I've already been successful in other careers I can't just keep putting my hat out there yes you can yes you can so you can and you I also have my highs and lows I have my moments mm -hmm. where I'm like you know, I'm right now at a crossroads in, in a good way, reflecting on going, mm -hmm. how far do I want to go with my design career? Where am I going and where can I pivot to to capitalize on my exposure in the industry, in my work? And, you know, what would I be willing to give up in a positive way and supplement it in a different way? And that's a journey that I'm yeah, going on like right now. Balance. And it's again getting yeah. that balance, and I don't mind being 60, 40, 70, 30, as long as it's not, it's not consistent. And through the journey, I'm learning, rediscovering redis myself as well. And like I said, mm -hmm. you know, stay hungry. And that's where that comes from, you know. And also, yeah. I get to, I'm at a point sometimes where I'm just like, you know, searching for that towel bar or that hardware is driving me nuts. <laughs> I don't know if I can do this anymore. And I'm constantly saying that a lot lately, even though I've been doing kitchens and bathrooms for during COVID and, and even now it has sustained me. It's yeah. like the surgeon. I'm going, man, how long do I want to do this for? Um, but, you know, I'm doing it. I'm doing it. <laughs> yeah. No, I mean, and you just never know what next opportunity will come really? through because you've done it all from wall coverings for working from Benjamin um, with paints and everything else in between. And I have, I have to be I the had, singing I, decorator uh, TV show <laughs> next. <laughs> you're not the first one to call me that. Everyone's like, "Well, you're gonna sing when you install the drapes." I go, "No." <laughs> and, That's extra. Um, but it, it's that journey. I I've dabbled yeah. in a little bit of everything. I get I I sit down with contractors. I read architectural plans, drafting. Um, mm. I building departments. I have I've got a good natural sense of evolution and a good foundation. And um, you know, I may not be quote unquote. Um, you know, I've got the the education of life, the walk. You know, I'm not formally trained with a degree in design, but I've got you know the journey. Twenty years. Degree. Yeah. 
Yeah, I would say life experience counts for a lot, especially on the job learning since you've been doing it for so long. Yeah. Now, speaking of all that you have going on, yeah. I want to make sure everyone knows how they can keep up with you and your rising stars and all the different places they may project to. Um, so how what's the best way to keep up with? The best Ms. way are, well, I'm, you know, I'm on Facebook under David Santiago or Casa Santi on Instagram. And I love Facebook. I'm a Facebook advocate because I like actually corresponding with people during a, a messenger and replying to people. I think it's important to acknowledge acknowledgement. Um, yeah. and social media means social. Hello. <laughs> yeah. uh, uh, strictly Santi on Instagram and for my singing career, Tenor Santi. I made it very easy. Strictly Santi, mm -hmm. Tenor Santi. And my most recent new endeavor would be um, Hospidential, which started about a year and a half to two years ago with the Aspire Design Showhouse in High Point where I brought mm -hmm. hospitality in, and merged it into hospitality and residential through my product designs. Cause I have a lighting collection uh, with American Brass and Crystal and a wall covering collection with uh, Bijou covering and both are hospitality hybrids. So again, it was just like this rethinking. Um, there's residential, I came up with hospitential <laughs> and, we, and we brought that <laughs> over into the Kaleidoscope project. It was my first quote unquote hospitality project and for many of us it was and to mm -hmm. realize that and, and capitalize on that is a, another opportunity that we have anyway that's where you can yeah. find me on twitter yeah. you can call me you can email me my website is casasanti.com um and yeah. i'm always always accessible Oh, great. Well, thank you again for being my guest today and make sure everyone you stay tuned to the Camille Cower by going to my website, CamilleCower.com and keep watching the eSpot more to come. Thanks again for being my guest, David. This was a pleasure and I just love all of the different stories I've had with the Kaleidoscope Project. So make sure you also check out the Kaleidoscope Project at KaleidoscopeProject.com and find out more about all the different designers that were involved in this beautiful project. So thanks again and I'll see you at market. <laughs> yes, thank you Camille, I'll be at market. I've got a lot going on there, but most importantly, thank you so much for saying yes and or inviting us to be mm -hmm. part of your story and your journey and getting to know you. And I know this is the beginning of mm. a beautiful business relationship. Mwah. Yeah. Uh, I'm taking it all. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate it. <laughs> Likewise.